Hi everyone, this is Aria and today I want to show you a technique that I use when I'm creating class simulations that can help you iterate your simulations a lot better instead of having to go back and forth and the way that we're going to do that is by using geometry nodes. So the first thing that we're going to do is select the default cube and just bring it up so G to move Z and you can type in 1. Next let's hit shift A, mesh and add a plane. Let's scale this up, so S to scale, and type in 10. Next, we can head over to the physics properties on the right, and we're going to add a collision to our ground, as well as our cube. We can just leave those at the default setting. And now that we've got our collision objects, we can just add our claws. So let's hit Shift A, Mesh, and add a new plane. Then you can just bring this up by hitting G to move, Z, and typing in 3. Next, let's scale our claws, so let's hit S to scale and type in 4. Then just make sure that we're on frame 1, and we can head back into the physics properties, click cloth to add our claw simulation. If you've got a slower computer, you can leave this around 5, but I'm going to set mine a little bit higher. Then we're just going to scroll all the way down to the bottom, open up the collision settings, and again, I'm going to set mine a little bit higher, but just do this based on the speed of your system. And we also want to add self collision so that our cloth isn't crashing into itself. Now if I was to hit play, you'll see that our cloth falls and it sort of just hits our collision object, but it's not bending at all. The reason for that is because we haven't added any subdivisions to our cloth. So normally what I would tell you to do is we would hit tab to go into edit mode, make sure that all of our vertices are selected, right click and hit subdivide. Then I would tell you to set this to something like 75 or whatever works for you. And now again, if we hit play, you'll see that it's a little bit slower, but our cloth is falling and it's working properly now. Then normally we would hit shade smooth and head over to the modifiers properties and add a subdivision surface. Then at this point, now that you've got your basic simulation, you could start getting the look of the scene by adding lights, for example. Then you could go back into the modifiers properties and add something like a solidify to make this a little bit more realistic. But for example, if you wanted to animate this cloth or attach it to an item and animate that item, things start to become really slow, especially at higher resolutions. So for example, if I was to hit shift A and add an icosphere, I'm just using this as an example. Now if we were to take this cloth and shift select our icosphere, control P and parent this, and hit play, you'll see that nothing happens at all. It's almost as if it's not attached. So we need to do one more thing. So again, back to frame one. So next you would go into edit mode and select whatever vertices you want, then head over to object data properties, add a vertex group, and you could assign these vertices. Then if we go back into the physics, all the way down and open up the shape settings, we could add our pin group. Now if I was to just select our icosphere and hit play, and now hit G to move our icosphere, you can see that I can move this around and it's affecting our cloth, but it's very slow, especially if you've got a slower computer. You'll notice that it can be a little bit harder to work with and it ends up becoming very time consuming. And again, there are ways to remove vertices. You could just unselect all four corners, for example. Right click and dissolve vertices. Then if I just remove the subdivision and the solidify, you'll see that we're back to where we started. Then of course we could re-subdivide at a lower level just to do our animation and add more subdivisions later. But again, it just ends up becoming time consuming. So I like to do this a little bit more procedurally and I'm going to show you how I do that. So let's just get rid of these for now just so it's not confusing and we've just got our cloth physics. And again, if I hit play, you'll notice that we do have our pin group still. Then I'm just going to head over to the vertex groups and delete that just so that we're back to the very start. And now if I hit play, you'll see that our plane just falls and hits our cube again. So like I said, this is a lot of back and forth and it's not really necessary since we have something like geometry nodes that we can utilize to change the resolution of our cloth up and down dynamically. So that when we're animating, it can be at a lower resolution and then back up to a higher resolution when we're baking our simulation. And the way we want to do this is with geometry nodes. So let's just head up to the right. And when you see this little plus sign, I'm going to just click and drag this out 
to create another window and you can create it anywhere you want. I'm just going to do it here. Then we're going to select this here and change this to geometry nodes. I'm just going to hover here and hit N to remove our menu. And now if I click new, you'll see that we've got a new geometry node set up with an input and an output. So hit shift A and go to search. And you're going to type in sub and click subdivide mesh. And then we just want to drop that right in between our input and output. And now if I hit play, you'll see that absolutely nothing changed. And even if we set this to level 3 and reset our simulation, you'll see that it's doing exactly the same thing. And the reason for that is because we need to put our geometry nodes before our simulation. To do that, we just need to head over to the modifiers properties. And you'll notice that our stack here has our cloth first, followed by our geometry nodes. And if you just think about this logically, what's happening is we're simulating the cloth first and then after that we're adding subdivisions. Which really doesn't make any sense because of course we want to subdivide this before we add our simulation. So we can just click here and drag this up and drop this above. You'll notice that that reset our simulation down here and if we were to hit play, you'll see that now we actually have some geometry. And if I was to shade flat, you'll see how many and we can add more. Head back to frame 1, and you'll see that there's even more now. And this may seem a bit trivial, but I find this quite helpful when you're creating a lot of moving class simulations. All you have to do is bring this up and down. So if I want to bring this to 6 and hit play, you'll see that it is moving a lot slower, but we're getting a better idea of what our simulation actually is. I'm just going to shade smooth, and we can also add a subdivision surface just to make that a little bit nicer. And you'll notice that our geometry nodes has disappeared. And the reason is because now you can see that we selected our subdivision surface with the blue border around it. And we actually need to click on our geometry nodes to access it again. And the reason why they do that is because you can actually add a second geometry nodes below this. And this way now you can select between the geometry nodes. So now if I go back to frame 1, you can see that this is already parented to our sphere, but if I hit play, it's not holding on to it because we need to recreate our pin group. If we head over to the object data properties, you'll see that we don't have our group anymore. So we're going to hit tab and you'll notice something funny here. Even though we added a bunch of subdivisions, they're not actually transferring over to our mesh. So if we were to just select our single vertice over here and add a new pin group and click assign, then head back into the cloth settings and down to the shape, we can add our new group. And now if we hit play, you'll see that it's pinning properly to our sphere, but we have another problem now. And what's happening here is we do have a lot of resolution in our mesh, but unfortunately because the subdivision doesn't actually transfer over to the mesh data, we're actually just getting one vertice that's being pinned. So essentially what it's saying is pin this vertice all the way up to here and all the way up to here. So we're getting this triangle right here where it's being pinned. So I'm just going to set this back down to zero and turn off our subdivision surface just so that we're back to our original cube. Hit tab to go into edit mode and A to select everything. Then we actually are going to right click and click subdivide. In this case, we're only going to set three cuts. And the reason why we want to do that is now if we were to pin this here, our pin group would only reach out to these two vertices and be within this triangle here. So if I head back to object data properties, Let's just remove our other group and add a new one. And let's assign the vertice to our new group. Then back into object mode, if I hit play, you'll see that it's kind of detached again. So we need to add it back into our simulation. So again, let's just head over to the physics properties, scroll all the way down. And you'll see that our pin group disappeared when we deleted it. So let's just select it again. And the reason why this method works so well is now that we've got a little bit of subdivision in the beginning, we can now subdivide this a little bit less. But you'll see that now that it looks a little bit more proper because only this part of our corner is being held. And then if I just turn the subdivide surface back on, we've got our full setup again. So now you can go between resolutions very simply to get an idea of how everything is going to fall around the cube. But of course, if I was to click on our icosphere and hit play, 
you'll see that when I move it around, it's a little bit slower. So again, what we can do is just add a little bit less subdivisions. So again, the resolution is a little bit lower, but this is a good way to get an idea of how you want the animation to be. And it's a lot quicker than when you have a lot more subdivisions, especially if you've got your final subdivision. You'll see that if I hit play, it's going really slow, and if I go to move this, it doesn't really work. I found this came in quite handy when I was doing my last project because I was trying to animate this. And like I said, this isn't anything major, but it's just a really quick way to utilize geometry nodes to change the resolution of your class simulations. So I hope you enjoyed that. Make sure to like and subscribe to this video. And if you want to support me directly, you can head over to my Patreon page and sign up to become a member. And I'll be adding a lot more content to that as well in the future. Okay, I'll see you soon. Bye.